In this question, we're told the 8th and 9th term of a geometric series are 576 and 2304 respectively. Find the 5th term of the geometric series. In order to answer this question, I'm going to use the nth term of a geometric series. Un is equal to ar to the power of n minus 1. That means that u8 would be a times r to the power of n minus 1, so 8 minus 1 is 7 and that is equal to 576. U9 is going to be a r to the power of 8 minus 1, which, sorry, 9 minus 1, which is 8, which gives me 2304. Now if I label these equations 1 and 2, what I can do is I can divide the ninth term by the eighth term, so you can divide any term by its previous term, and that will leave you with a common ratio, and we'll see that now, because we get ar to the power of 8, over AR to the power of 7 is 2,304 divided by 576 and that leaves us with R is equal to 4. Once we know four, uh, that R is equal to 4 we can find the first term, it doesn't matter which equation you sub in, into, I'm going to sub it into equation 1 so A times 4 to the power of 7 equals 576. If I divide by the 4 to the power of 7, uh, apologies, not sure what happened there, uh, divide by the 4 to the power of 7, what that leaves us with is that A is 9 over 256. Okay, so at this point I've got A, I've got R, I can just sub that in to find the fifth term. The fifth term, U5, will be given by A, which is 9 over 256, multiplied by 4 to the power of n minus 1, so 5 minus 1 is 4, and so I get 9 over 256 times 256 which gives us that the fifth term is equal to 9. Let's look at part B. Part B tells us another geometric series has a first term A and a common ratio R. The third term of this geometric series is 24. So let's use the nth term of the geometric series again. I'm going to read through the full information in a moment, but let's just do this one sentence at a time. So the third term of a geometric series is 24. That means I get A times R n which is 3 minus 1 gives us 2, so ar squared equals 24. We're then told the sum of the second, third and fourth terms is minus 56. So the second term is a times r to the power of n at 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then the powers of r I go to go up successfully, so we get ar, ar squared plus a r cubed is equal to minus 56. Now, we've got simultaneous equations here. There's a couple of ways you can solve these simultaneous equations. I'm going to choose to rearrange equation 1 so that I get a is equal to 24 over r squared. So I'm going to substitute that into equation 2, which gives me 24 over r squared times r. Uh, let's get rid of this little bit. Let's just do that bit again. So we get 24r over r squared plus 24r squared over r squared plus 24r cubed over r squared equal to minus 56. Now if I cancel the terms through so that I get uh, 24 over r plus 24, so the r squared is completely cancelled there, plus 24r equals minus 56. And now I want to get rid of this r as a denominator, so I'm going to multiply by this, the whole equation by r. So we get 24 plus 24r plus 24r squared equals minus 56r. 
if I add the 56R to both sides, I'm going to get rearranging, so I've got quadratic as a leading term, I get 24R squared. We now get plus 80R, and then plus 24, equal to 0. And finally, I can divide through at this point by 8, which gives me 3R squared plus 10R plus 1, uh, plus 3, sorry, apologies, equal to 0. Okay, so now we've shown this is as required. Now we've shown that the R satisfies that equation. We're now asked, given that the modulus of R is less than 1, find the value of R in the sum of infinity of the series. So I want to solve this quadratic. The nice thing with this quadratic is it's got a prime term at the front, which means the only factors are, if we can factorize this, are going to be 1 and 3, and the last term, which the only factors are, are going to be 1 and 3, and I want to combine to give 10 in the middle. So I'm going to do 3R. Signs have got to be the same, and they've got to be positive, because the R, R, R term is positive. So 3R times R plus. And what I want is 10R, so I'm going to need the 3 in the second bracket, so it multiplies that 3R, and the 1 in the first bracket, so it multiplies that 1R, and that will give us the 10R in total. So this leads to the solutions that R is equal to minus a third, or R is equal to minus 3. And of course, going back to the information, the modulus of r is less than 1, so r is equal to minus 1 third. Okay, so it wants us now to find the sum to infinity of the series. We know that the sum to infinity is a over 1 minus r. That means we need to find a. a is given from equation 3, let's log with that equation 3, so we're now going to get a equals 24 over minus 1 third squared, so I get a equals 24 divided by 1 ninth, or 24 divided by 9, which gives us a is 216. So finally, now I have everything that I need for the sum to infinity. So the sum to infinity is given by a, which is 216, over 1 minus minus 1 third. And so if we put that into our calculator and evaluate that in one go, we get that the sum to infinity is equal to 162. Okay then, well let's have a look at the mark scheme for this and see how the marks are awarded. In part A, there's a standalone mark just for getting that the ratio is equal to 4. Uh, we then get the, a method mark for attempting to work out the fifth term and an answer mark for a correct value for the fifth term. In part B, there's a standalone mark for forming this first equation. As a standalone mark for getting this second equation. There is then a method mark for attempting to solve these equations simultaneously and an answer mark if you have got to the quadratic with convincing working out. Finally in part two we have an answer mark for correctly identifying that the ratio is equal to minus a third standalone mark for the answer mark, uh, sorry, the first term being equal to 216, a method mark for substitution into the sum to infinity of a geometric series, and an answer mark for the sum to infinity of this geometric series. Okay, well I hope my solution made sense and that you was able to follow it, and that you was also able to understand how to mark that question.